Women across the country up in arms over the Hobby Lobby decision, hello Senate, and women in Congress pushing to roll back some of the intrusions into women's liberty and access to everything from abortion services to contraception. And with a certain former first lady and secretary of state potentially gearing up for a presidential run and maybe even a primary challenge from another popular woman, Republican politicians are fishing for ways to push back on the war on women narrative and show that they care about women too. We're the mothers. We're the wives. We're the grandmothers. We're the big sisters. We're the little sisters and we are the daughters. You know it's true, don't you? I love you women! <laughs> and I hear your voices. Uh, no, no, that, that didn't work. Much better to put forward women of their own, to tell the conservative story in a woman's voice. Last Friday, a group of conservative women, mostly members of the Republican Study Committee, did just that. They met to talk about how the GOP can better reach women with the message of how their policies would improve women's lives. Just one reporter was allowed into the session, Ask Ash Scow of the conservative Washington Examiner. She wrote a piece about the session in which speakers explained that it's not conservative policy that's turning women off, it's about tone, including Congressman, Congresswoman Renee Elmers of North Carolina, who also added this. Men do tend to talk about things on a much higher level. You know, I, one of the things that has always been one of my frustrations, and I speak about this all the time, many of my male colleagues, when they go to the House floor, they've got, you know, some high charter graph behind them, and they're talking about trillions of dollars and, you know, how the debt is awful, and, you know, and we all agree with that. But by starting off that discussion that way, we've already turned people away. Because it's, it's like, that doesn't affect my life. The biggest, the biggest need that women have is more time. We all want more time in our lives. More time in the morning to get ready. More time in the evening to spend time with our families. All of these things. More time to move up that career path. It's about time. And we have to make sure that women understand that. We understand that. We need our, our male colleagues to understand that that if you can bring it down to a woman's level in everything that she is balancing in her life, that's the way to go. In other words, instead of all those complicated, charty, graphy things that men use as a way to reach women, we should focus on girl things, like having more time to get ready in the morning, and on being a mom and making the family a delicious lunch. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Elmers, who opposes equal pay laws, thinks insurance companies should be able to charge women more because well, they have babies, and that the war, the real war on women is Obamacare, is facing former American Idol contestant and crooner Clay Aiken in November. She blasted Scow's report, calling her a liberal reporter. Did I mention that she's from the conservative Washington Examiner? And said she was taken out of context, saying, quote, I am a woman and find it both offensive and sexist to take my words and redefine them to imply that women need to be addressed at a lower level. So Scow released the full audio like a proper modern girl. But the bigger point is that the GOP's solution to the war on women seems to involve some really old-fashioned views of women, even from women on the right. As if women just aren't sophisticated enough to understand data. And the way to get more women to vote Republican is to get us all back to the olden days. War